Excuse me, Calvin. I need to make a video. Take it down. Over here. That's it. Let's talk about Lord of the Rings. We're going into part four of our series, The Lord of the Rings is the Best, and Here's Why. Coming up. Hey everyone, my name is Austin, and this channel is all about helping you to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith, film, and everything in between. If that is exciting to you and you're new here, consider subscribing for a new video every week. In the last video on this series, we left off with Frodo and Sam on their way to the Prancing Pony Inn, while Gandalf goes to seek counsel from Saruman, the head of his order. Gandalf arrives at Orthanc on the outskirts of Fanghorn Forest and at the base of part of the Misty Mountains. And I've always found the scene where we're introduced to Saruman very interesting because when we see him, he's introduced through a voiceover first, hearing his character of kind of prophesying Gandalf's arrival and all these things that are going on. And then we see him and he's this man in a white robe. And typically in filmmaking, when you see someone in white, they are kind of the hero protagonist character. They are good, more of a pure person. And when you see someone in like black or dark gray clothing, they typically are more representative of a bad or evil character. And so we're kind of thrown a mixed signal because we see this white robe that represents good on Saruman, but based on his voice and tone and a few other things that we're kind of hinted at, he doesn't seem like a good guy. He is the head of the wizard order for Gandalf, but at the same time, I couldn't escape this feeling of unease every time I watch this movie. It is then through their following conversation that Saruman reveals to Gandalf how, how he has seen Sauron building an army and regaining his strength. I'm not quite sure if at this point Gandalf begins to suspect anything, but deep down, hi. I definitely think it's possible. After hearing that the ring wraiths are now in pursuit of the ring and know that it is in the Shire and are heading in that direction, Gandalf exclaims how it will lead them to Frodo and he urgently makes a run for the door and tries to get out to warn him and help him. It is now at this point where Saruman slams the doors of the tower on him trapping Gandalf inside, and it is in this moment that Gandalf realizes that his friend and mentor has been lost to the evil of Sauron. I can only imagine what it would feel like to experience that dread and betrayal in that moment for Gandalf. To have someone that you look up to so highly turn out to be someone completely different is an all too familiar experience these days. But in Gandalf's case, as we will later find out in the Two Towers, there is a reason behind this that will change his character for the better. And so at this moment with Gandalf trapped in the Tower of Orthanc, a wizard duel ensues and we are shown part of the battle as it then cuts away, as it appears that Gandalf has lost and has perished, we cut away to Sam and Frodo. They're now nearing the edge of the Shire, and while they are walking through a field, Merry and Pippin burst out, knocking them all to the ground. Now the moral of the story here is don't steal. But I want to go a step further than just don't steal. Because even through our bad actions, God can bring something good out of it. Now, imagine with me how different this story would have been. Now I'm talking about the whole story of The Lord of the Rings without the character of Merry and Pippin. As I've mentioned, they're kind of comic relief and a bit of side characters, but as this trilogy progresses, they become more and more prevalent in their role that they play. Think of Baromir's redemptive moment that we'll talk about when we get to the end of this movie and, he's, and him sacrificing himself to save them. Think of the Ents and Isengard and their march on Isengard when they are talking to Treebeard. Think of individually Merry and Eowyn's relationship and the friendship that they build and how that affects each of them. And of course Pippin's heroic acts at Minas Tirith. And all of these things would not have happened had they not been in Farmer Maggot's crops, stolen some of it, and by happenstance, and had an encounter with Frodo and Sam. They were not necessarily where they should have been in that moment, but it was still used to bring about good and in the end help to save the world. 
So after being chased out of Farmer Maggot's crops, they find themselves on a road and some delicious mushrooms. But Frodo in that moment is then reminded of wise words from Gandalf saying to stay off the roads. Having a bad feeling all of a sudden, he quickly shoos everyone off the road and into hiding. The road and the forest around it begin to shrink and grow dark as a mysterious shadowy figure approaches on a horse. None of the characters can see this, but you can feel the dread and fear inside of them. And so this figure dismounts his horse, sensing something's presence as they can sense the power of the ring and feel it out. And Frodo enters into this trance-like state as he almost puts the ring on his finger to which Sam responds and quickly is able to stop him before this happens and they are discovered. And so Mary throws their bag of mushrooms, distracts the wraith, and it runs off after the bag. The four hobbits then flee, running as fast as they can to get away from this wraith. And as soon as they are at a place where they feel safe to stop for a moment, Mary and Pippin are asking them, what was that thing? It was definitely looking for something or someone. At this point, Mary and Pippin are hinted that something deeper, something more important is going on. And so they then in that moment with such little information have to trust in Sam and Frodo to help get them a little bit away so they can make their way to the Prancing Pony Inn. They get on a barge, are able to get away just before the wraith is able to catch them, and then arrive at the Prancing Pony as a storm is starting. Now as much as I would love to start talking about the Prancing Pony in here and the introduction of the character of Aragorn, he is my favorite character in this whole trilogy, and I have way too much to talk about to pack into this video, so for now, that's where we're going to stop. So again, kids, the moral of today's story. <laughs> Kind of the overarching theme of the scene with Gandalf and Saruman and that betrayal and along with Frodo and Sam now being joined by Merry and Pippin on their quest. Trust the path and the plan that God lays out for you. There may be betrayals along the way. We are all human and experience tragic and terrible things, but trust that there is a future plan for that thing that is taking place right now. It may hurt, but God has a plan for it. And also with Frodo and Sam and meeting Merry and Pippin, you may do bad things in your life. We all do, and that is okay because God can take those things and bring something positive from it. It may not seem significant in that moment, and you may feel shame for what you have done, but that will help to shape you for your future. And even if it wasn't exactly where you should have been, God can use that moment to then direct your future. As always, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I really hope you were enjoying this series. I thought it'd be fun to get a couple parts going for the few weeks here. I do plan to talk about some other variety of things in the near future. We have fall coming up soon, so I want to be talking about kind of some thrillers and the horror genre and stuff like that. I'm coming up on one year of starting this channel. I'm very excited that we've completed one year now. I have some kind of ideas that are bouncing around in my head of what the future of this channel may hold. Always, I am taking requests for movies. I was reminded of that about a, in my last week's video. Someone recommended I talk about Hacksaw Ridge. They had watched my um, The Only Great Christian Movie is uh, Ragamuffin. And though I don't necessarily view Hacksaw Ridge as a Christian movie, there are tons of awesome themes that I would love to address. So look forward to that video coming out in the future. I'm not sure exactly when yet with all the other ideas that I have bouncing around, but I will for sure be discussing that one. So please, if you have any recommendations of stuff you would just like to either hear my perspective on or stuff you think I may not have seen and you want me to check out and hear my thoughts on, definitely throw that in the comments down below. I will for sure check those things out. As always, if you have enjoyed this video and you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please do. Thank you again for checking out my channel and this video. I will see you in the next one.